Welcome back to Next Generation. Today's video is going to be a little different than our usual videos because we're always showing you guys how to do a DIY, paint it, stain it, but we never show you guys how to go back to a project and repaint <laughs> or restain things. So that's what we're doing today. Nice, I like that. We did our shiplap wall in the living room and we both agreed that we don't love the color. <laughs> and we figured we'd share it with you guys because we've never talked about going back and switching things around. So we're gonna go over all of the steps that you should take to properly repaint or restain a project and make it look like brand new. Yeah, I'm really excited because one day I was just looking at the shiplap wall and me and Jen just kind of got into a conversation and come to find out we both wanted to change the wall color but we just never voiced it. Speaking of changing something in the living room, we're also gonna show you guys how to restain something. Oh, we are? And that's going to be our box bean shelves. This is news to me. <laughs> How am I just now figuring this out, finding this out? So since we're brightening up the shiplap wall, I figured why not go ahead and brighten up our box beam shelves as well so we can just okay. bring some brightness all over to the living room. I like that. I mean, I'm not against it for sure. So this is a fun way to easily either transform a space by repainting your room or just by bringing some life to maybe an old project something that's wood, and you can just restain or repaint it. So we're gonna show you guys both of these applications because they are a little bit different. I am very excited about it. One thing I will say is it's amazing what a little bit of stain or paint will do to a room. I mean, you can transform an entire room with a can of paint. Yeah. It might even make it more spacious if you go with a light color. You can make the room feel smaller if you want with a dark color. <laughs> Who knows? I'm very excited about the box theme. I did not know this. I found out with you guys on this video live so what else are you deciding on changing in this house? So <laughs> should we just go through the list now? Or? You know. Everything. I uh, know, I do know. <laughs> so let's jump right into it. We're right. gonna start with repainting our wall. Okay, step one. So for your wall, ours is pretty new. It's pretty fresh. So we don't have to really fix anything, but I'll go over a few things that you may need to fix if maybe you're repainting an older wall. So first off, if you got any chipping, flaking, or peeling paint, you wanna remove all of that. Either scrape it, unless it's wood. Yes. I don't recommend scraping it because you may scrape away the actual wood that you're trying to paint. So you can use a scraper for this and just scrape away any peeling or loose paint, yep. maybe any cracks that you have in the paint. You wanna scrape all of that off. So if you have any holes in the wall, you wanna go ahead and patch those now before we get into any priming or anything like that really want to do the prep work before we get into the painting. This is key to a long lasting paint job. Yes, and then you want to sand any uneven textures that might be on the wall. If you patch something, then you may need to sand that. And if you do have textured walls, which we do, then they do have a texture spray. So you can experiment with that and add some texture back onto your wall. So it all flows and you can't even tell there was a hole there. Easier said than done. <laughs> Sheetrock is tough to blend, I'm not gonna lie. So if you did need to sand anything, or if you didn't need a patch or sand, but your wall is, like we mentioned, a little bit older, mm -hmm. then you do wanna wipe it all down. Wipe any dust, cobwebs, <laughs> dirt and grime, and you can do this just with a damp cloth. You can also use soapy water. If you have things that are like caked on or stuck on your wall, then you wanna wait for your wall to be completely dry because you do not want to add paint on a wet wall. No, that's not gonna work. We've got a nice clean wall. You want to talk about another key application? Priming. Yes. This is very important. We always prime. Yep. Sometimes you can get away with not priming. Mm. Sometimes you can get away with the primer paint mix. Oh yeah. But when it comes to repainting, which is what we're doing in this video, we like to prime. Yeah, especially if you're trying to cover up a color. You don't want that color to bleed through, or you don't want that color to alter or change yeah. the color that you're trying to apply That's to the wall. The main one. So that is the key to priming. It covers up that color. Especially because our wall is super dark yes. and we want to go lighter. So this is going to be really hard to just add our new paint over the dark paint because you'll need three or four coats. Yep. And at that point you could have just primed. Primer is not only just to cover a color and start with a blank canvas, but also primer is going to help adhere the new paint to the wall okay. so that it could prevent any cracking 
any chipping and all of that, which you just fixed on your old wall. So we don't want this to happen again. So let's prime. Another reason to use primer is if you don't know what type of paint is on the wall, you can't just go and slap a coat of paint on there and hope it works out. I mean, you can, but you're not gonna get the best results. So you prime. And then that way you can use the paint that you want without worrying about what paint was actually there before. Yes. So some materials that you'll need to paint if you're new to this. We like to use a paint tray, which we just have a metal reusable one at home. And then we buy the plastic liners that yes. go inside, which are only like 99 cents. I have used just the plastic and the paint spills out oh, everywhere. Yeah. It moves all over, it's just a mess. We also like to pair it with a roller. This is obviously the easiest way or a spray gun. Yeah never have done that yet but i have heard as easy as a spray gun is you spend just as much time prepping because the spray just goes everywhere i like to use an angled brush just to get the detailed areas yeah. so around the baseboards and since we do have a shiplap wall i'm going to use the brush in between the shiplap and this is just going to help with the smaller spaces and then i go over it with the roller to roll everything out make it all nice and smooth so there's no brush strokes in our paint Yep, that's key. And I do, I really like the angled brush. I do not like taping. So I would rather just use an angled brush, take my time and just cut those edges rather than put the tape there. Um, I haven't had good experiences with tape. I haven't quite figured it out, okay? Uh, it peels away the paint. And I know you're supposed to let it dry. You're supposed to peel no, it when you it's peel wet. It before. See, yeah. I don't even know. But if you use painter's tape, then a trick that I saw is to use longer strips of tape. So if you're using a lot of small strips, then they may not line up. Oh. There may be some parts with bubbles. That so use longer strips. You can use a credit card and push against the tape to make sure it's stuck on there and there's no loose edges. And then you're gonna peel your tape away while the paint is still wet so it doesn't rip your dry paint off the wall. Yeah, that was the other issue I had. So as far as paint splatter, paint drippage, paint mess, we like to use a drop cloth. That way we don't have to go back with paint thinner and wipe up a million little splatters of paint. So once you've primed, we like to wait at least till the next day to add our paint just so that it's completely dry. Yes. We're gonna go ahead and add our beautiful new color to the wall. This is the exciting part in my opinion. This is where it comes back to life. Yep. We're gonna point to the one that we like better. One, two, three. <laughs> I mean, if we're going with dark stuff. Thank God. Just lighter though, it looks awesome. <laughs> and as far as the brush, you can reuse your brushes. Mm -hmm. You just wanna make sure that while your paint is still wet on the brush, you wash it off. So you can use water, soapy water. If it doesn't come off or it's dried on the paintbrush, then you can put it in some paint thinner and get it off with that. You can use a wire brush, works yep. for us every time. If you are using an oil-based paint, don't even try the soapy water. <laughs> just go ahead and go straight to the paint thinner. It'll save you a whole lot of time. So we're gonna do two coats of paint just because the first one isn't always as deep or the exact color that you're going for. You usually need two coats to achieve that. Moving on to restaining our box beams. Woohoo! Didn't so, even know, but now I'm excited. The color we're going with is something new. I've never used this before. What? I'm Nervous. excited. So we're gonna do a white wood stain. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I am too. So I'm gonna do a little test piece on a scrap board just oh, to yeah. see how it looks because I wanted them white, but I don't want to use paint. So I found that they have wood stains that are white so that you can still see the wood grain, but it just gives it like a oh, lighter. Oh, I'm excited now. I'm excited. I was nervous until I realized, y'all probably could tell in my face the whole time she was talking. <laughs> I'm over here just like. What is this white He always stain? trusts my design. Crazy design ideas. I have faith. I give my faith to her. If it doesn't, you can restain it using this video and these steps. Or if it doesn't work, guess who has to figure out why it doesn't work and how to fix it? <laughs> That's 
Right. So you're probably wondering, how are you gonna put white stain over this dark wood stain that you've already used on the box beams? Well, I can tell you. How? We're gonna prep it, just like we did the paint wall. We're gonna sand the old stuff away. Yep. And prep the space. So we're gonna use our sander for this because if you hand sand. You're gonna be there for a while, your hands are gonna be hurting. The type of sandpaper is really important because if you use one that's a really low grit, it may leave strokes and marks on your wood. So when you go to wood stain, it's really gonna accentuate those marks. Yeah. So we're probably gonna use a combination of sandpaper. We're gonna use a lower grit, which is basically a rougher sandpaper, so it can really knock off the wood stain. And then we'll go in with a higher grit, like 220, which is a lot it's finer. It's almost like a finishing sandpaper. So, so that way you can sand it nice and smooth again and there's no marks so when we go to restain it, everything's nice and smooth. You wanna know how we know about those marks? We learned the hard way. I used a really low grit sandpaper it's on the mantle and you can see some of the marks. All right, so after we've sanded down our box beams, we're ready to apply the stain. We wanna do one thing first. We wanna clean that area. So we're gonna use a tack cloth to wipe away all the dust to make sure it's super clean so when we go to add that stain, it applies perfectly. You're ready to apply the new white stain, which is really exciting. I know, I can't wait to see how this looks. There's two different ways you can apply the stain, a foam roller or cheesecloth. I like to use cheesecloth because you can either wipe away the wood stain or add a lot more really easily. So depending on what look you're going for, you can play around with that more with the cheesecloth than you can with a foam roller. I think what Jen's trying to say is you have a little more control on the application with the cheesecloth than you do the foam roller. So how do you like the white, guys? Oh, I was so nervous, but I love it. I, I am so it. excited. This is what I envisioned right after, you know, that light bulb turned on in my head and I was like, I went from, hmm, I don't know, to, oh, I know where we're going with this now. So, I love it. You see the vision now in the living room. We brought some lightness back into here. It looks good. It's gonna look good with the new furniture too, since we're kind of going with a darker furniture just to yep. lighten everything up around the living room. And it'll make everything just pop. Yep. stained yet and the after before and after and look at this beautiful wall i mean it's just it's too good too good so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you in the next video bye, bye guys, guys.